One night, as I slept in my cell, I dreamed a dream. I saw an old man in clothes that were little more than rags. He stood looking out from the house in which he lived. In his hand he held a book. On his back he carried a bag of such proportions it weighed him down. I saw him open the book, and what he read made him tremble and weep, so much so he could no longer control his feelings. Christian, for that was his name, turned to his daughter. What shall I do? Do what, father? We're all going to die. You've said that before. Of course we're going to die. No, daughter. The world will come to an end. Our city destruction will be burned with fire from heaven. Our family will perish. I must find a way to save us. Calm yourself down. You're talking that nonsense again. And take that silly pack off your shoulders. It must weigh a ton. I can't. I'm stuck with it. What on earth's in it? The cares of the world. You must come with me. We have no time to lose. We must flee. The only place you're going to flee is to bed. A good night's sleep will cure you of these troubled torments. Go on. But of course it didn't. My poor father tossed and turned all night and often woke with a nerve-shredding cry that made my heart turn cold. In the morning, he was no better. We have tried all manner of ways to rid him of these delusions. We chided him. We made fun of him. We even gave him the cold shoulder. But to no avail. I watched as Christian, to escape these unwanted attentions, walked alone in the fields. He wanted to run away, but did not know which way to go. What ails thee, good sir? It says here, I am condemned to die. Well, isn't that better than living in this miserable world? But I have to account for what I've done in my life. I may be old and near to death, but when I try to do this, the task seems hopeless. Then take this. There's not a moment to lose. Flee from the wrath to come. Is that all? And where do I go? Do you see that wicket gate in the distance? No, I, I see nothing. Well, there is a light shining. Can you not see that? Yes, I think I do. My eyes aren't too good. It's very faint. What will I find there? The celestial city. You'll find it at the top of Mount Zion. What will it be like? It's all in the book. Now, go towards the light and you'll come to the gate. When you get there, knock and you'll be told what to do. And take this key. You may need it when you come to Doubting Castle. But hurry, there's no time to lose. Hurry. Keep to the path. What so fast, sir? Stinnett at your service. How do you do? You can call me Ob. Ob Stinnett, yes. <laughs> of course. And this is Abel. 
pliable. <laughs> <laughs> then why do you follow me? Your daughter has asked us to bring you back. Yes, come back with us. But, but you dwell in the city of destruction. I cannot go back. Well, what are you looking for? A place that is incorruptible and undefiled and that will never fade. Come with me, brothers. And leave my friends and home comforts behind? Not likely. I'm going home. Hang on, hang on, obstinate. I like what he says. Let's listen a while. Have it your way, Pliable. I'm off. Well, come on then. We'll sit here and rest a while, and you can tell me more about where we're going. There will be many wonders to behold. There will be seraphim and cherubim, creatures that will dazzle your eyes. And just how do you know this? It's all here. We all meet the thousands who have gone before us. That sounds a little frightening if you ask me. No. No, they will be loving and caring. There will be no more hate. Men who have been cut to pieces or eaten by beasts will be clothed in immortality and will find holy virgins with golden harps. That sounds more like it. Come on, come on, let's get going. Christian, if this is your celestial city, I'll have none of it. I'm off. Then I beheld in my dream that a man came to him. Come on, old man. Let's get you out of there. I saw the steps then. What steps? The stepping stones over the marsh. Keeps you nice and safe. No. Anyway, can't wait. Must get on the road. I see. What's your name? John Faithful. Got yourself stuck in that muck, did you? I missed the steps. It's in that guidebook of yours. You, you pilgrims are all alike. You go at it like madmen. So keen to get to paradise, you don't see what's in front of you. Mind you, in this stinkhole, those steps are pretty hidden. Uh, I'm Jack Noel, by the way. There's not much I don't know about these parts. It's terrible leaving something like that in the middle of the narrow road. They should have filled it in long ago. Can't be done. The more they chuck stuff in, the more it swallows it up. Oh. There's another cartload. Mm. It's full of all the world's woes. You name it. Depression, despair, desolation. It all goes in. They've been doing it for thousands of years, but that first bit doesn't get any smaller. They call it the Slough of Despond. Well, it's horrible. But at least I'm on the other side of it now. If you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. You go up that way, and there's worse to come. There's all sorts of monsters ahead. And there's one particularly nasty, scaly brute called Apollyon. If you come across him, Beware. Ah, uh, it can't be worse than what I've got on my back. Take it off, throw it away. I can't. What's in it? The sins of my past. I know a couple who would get that off for you. And what is more, they take miles off your journey. You want to take that road up there to Flesh City. How do I get to this Flesh City? Well, you see yon hill, mm. go up there. 
and the first house you come to is Legal's. Christian set off along the new road towards the hill. As he got closer, it got steeper. Up and up he climbed, and the higher he climbed, the steeper it got. Soon it was no longer a hill, but a mountain. Carry on like that. The mountain was going to crush me. Well, why on earth did you go up there? That's not the path I told you to take. Um, a man I met told me he knew someone who, who could take this pack off my back. And what was the man's name? Jack Knowall. And I expect he directed you to his friends, legal and civil. Yes. I thought so. His scoundrels, a lot of them. Luring you back to the ways of the world. I've blown it, haven't I? I'll never get to paradise now. And this is heavier than ever. Well, I can't say you haven't made it difficult for yourself. You've forsaken the way that is good. To tread forbidden paths. But the man at the gate is understanding of those that have stumbled. But stumble again, and it'll be all over for you. So on your way, and Godspeed. Christian kept his head down and talked to no man. And by this stratagem did come eventually to the wicked gate. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Yes? Who are you? What do you want? A sinner from the City of Destruction, who seeks the Celestial City on Mount Zion. Will you let me through? Willingly, old man. Oh, what's going on? See yon castle? They try to kill anyone who comes to the gate. Old Beelzebub's archers will put an arrow in you quicker than you can blink. But you're safe in Goodwill's hands now. Uh, Parson said you would tell me which way to go. Carry along the path. It's straight as a die and very narrow. You'll see many wide and winding roads branching off it. Don't be tempted to take those. But you know that by now. Uh, and this heavy pack, when can I put it down? Oh. Not until you reach the place of deliverance. Now on your way, sir. <sighs> the road was fenced on either side with a wall. Up this way did Burden Christian walk, but not without great difficulty because of the load on his back. He came at length to a hill, and at that place stood a cross. Blessed cross, blessed sepulchre, 
Blessed rather be the man that there was put to shame for me. And Christian went on his way with feelings of great joy. Listen, what say, where did you come from? Vain glory um, land. And we're ready for Mount Zion. But you weren't on the road. Ah, took a shortcut, saves us time. But I was told no, not... look, mate. What's it matter how we get in, as long as we get in? Well, I hope for your sake you're right. I'm Christian, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Form Al. Oh, Mr. Formal? No, Al Form. <laughs> and this is Miss Cheat. Hello. Here. That hill done off looks steep. No worries. Them paths go round it and meet on the other side. Save us hours. Miss Cheat, you go that way and I'll go that way. Hello again. You look puzzled, sir. I am. Going round seems the easier way, but I've learned enough by now to know we should go up. You're right. Follow me. Mm. house. The Lord built it as a refuge for pilgrims on their journey. Come on, let's see if we can lodge there for the night. We're on our way to Mount Zion, and we seek a night's rest. You are truly welcome, sirs. My three daughters will look after you. Follow me. I would hear of all that has happened on your pilgrimage. The pilgrims and their host discoursed late into the night. And after they committed themselves to their Lord for protection, they betook themselves to rest. The next morning, Faithful was gone again, and piety, prudence and charity led Christian into the armory. These plated clothes the Lord has provided for your protection. your enemies. A shield and helmet to fend off blows. And breastplates to face your foes. There is no back Plate. We do not give up back plates. You do not turn your back on your enemy. If you do, you are lost.
Hello, Fred. A bottle of wine and some raisins to sustain you on your way. Now we will show you a glimpse of the celestial city. Am I getting closer? Alas, the closer you get, the further away you are. First, you must go down into the Valley of Humiliation. My daughters will lead you, lest you slip. Now, in this Valley of Humiliation, poor Christian began to be afraid and to cast his mind whether to go back or to stand his ground. But he considered again that he had no armour for his back. Art thou bound? I come from the city of destruction, and I'm going to the city of Zion. You are a traitor. I am the king of the city of destruction. You are my subject, Prince. <laughs> the prince whom you seek is my enemy. Prepare thyself to die! And the foul fiend threw himself at Christian, who took courage and engaged most bravely with the monster. above half a day. What sighs and groans burst from Christian's heart. I never saw him all the while give so much as one pleasant look till he perceived that he had wounded Apollyon. Then indeed he did smile. Oh, Christian, you've been in a bit of a rumble. Look at you. Rub one of these on. What are they? I was given them. Told they were from the Tree of Life. Oh, oh that's good. I feel better already. Good. <laughs> What's that? What's what? The noise over there in those trees. Who's there? God, oh. Arson! How pleased we are to see you. Come join us. I shall indeed join you. And hear about all that's been happening to you on the way. 
and then Christian and faithful related the trials that had befallen them and how they'd come to this place victorious. Now, Parson, what advice have you to give us for the rest of our journey? My brave pilgrims, ahead of you there is a town. There you will not be welcome. Indeed, one of you will be killed. I know not which. I only know that the one who dies will enter the celestial city before the other while his fellow must endure many more tribulations. to Vanity Fair, where every desire is gratified. We've been trading for over 3,000 years now, and every year we just get bigger. Here you will find all forms of merchandise imaginable, pleasures and delights to suit all tastes. The perfect stopover for the weary pilgrim, because once you lay your head down, in Vanity Fair. You'll never want to leave. And even as I speak, I spy two travellers on yonder horizon. Good day to you, sir. Welcome to Vanity Fair. Your every wish fulfilled. I there's so much. Let me help you choose. No. no. We don't want to buy anything. We're just passing through. Well, we were told we had to come this way, but we won't be stopping. And where is your destination, old man? The Celestial City. Ah, of course, the Celestial City. <laughs> but first you must stay a while, enjoy what we have to offer. No, I really think we must be going. Oh, nonsense! Uh, come follow me. We must get you some new clothes. You can't go around Vanity Fair dressed like that. We have the choice of designer labels. No, oh well, later perhaps. Uh, some other delights then. Uh, precious gems, pearls, gold. Jewelry to take home. No? Well, what about a young wench then? You can have one for a day. Or longer if you like. Oh, you're hard to please. A knighthood perhaps. Your age, you deserve one. We have all the honours on offer. I know. Come with me. Climb. Look. Do you like what you see? A thousand acres. And you could be master of it all. No? His lord didn't think much of it either. He offered it to him and he turned it down. It's certainly beautiful. Christian, turn away your eyes. This is vanity. Our trade is in heaven. What do you want then? Truth. <laughs> truth. Anybody got any truth? Got any truth? Truth. Got any truth? Huh? Truth! Truth! Uh. Got this fine young filly, sir. Comes from a very good line. You can't go wrong with her. We don't wish to be rude, but we really don't want anything you have. Not so fast, sunshine. You spurning my goods. No, he was only saying... You I... shut your mouth. I'm talking to this young scraggy upstart. Yeah. Yes, Lizzie, what's going on? This young Japanese, he thinks he's better than us. He's spurned my merchandise. What, these two ragamuffins? Why 
money you're pissed off of them. And that's my very best from Paris. <whistles> What's going on here? These two ragamuffins won't spend their money. Hmm, I don't see that's a problem. Stuck up they are. Especially this one. Kept asking for truth. We don't do truth. Causing an affray. It's a serious offence in Vanity Fair. Take them away. <laughs> you face the consequences of your actions in the morning. for Lord Hategood. Your name is Faithful? Yes. How answer you the charge that you did disturb the peace in the market square? I'm a man of peace, Your Honour. I didn't mean to create a disturbance. Who says otherwise? Come forward and say your piece. He calls the affray, Your Honour. How so? He was asking for truth. We don't peddle truth in Vanity Fair. He also refused all of our wares. Said he was just passing through. Nobody passes through Vanity Fair without buying something. It's in the front to the Lord. Thank you. It is clear to me that this fellow is a dangerous cur and must be put down. Let me speak. He's too... He's too young, Your Honour. I'm a witness. I was there. Hmm. Very well, let him speak. Thank you, Your Honour. What's your name? Hopeful. Well, get on with it. What do you want to say? I... I was there in the market. This man is no trouble. He looked so weary from his travelling. What had he done wrong, I asked myself. He did want to buy something. What? Truth. He was told there was no truth available. He spurned the young girl what I was offering. And he could have got the estate at a discount price as well. Hmm. To have rejected so blatantly all that Vanity Fair has to offer can mean only one thing. Prisoner at the bar, I sentence you, according to our law, to be burnt at the stake. Until you are ash! Take him away. Now I saw a chariot and two horses waiting for Faithful. As soon as his enemies had dispatched him, straightway he was carried through the clouds with sound of trumpets to the celestial gate. Put my hand.
hands to my ears. But I owed it to my friend to hear his screams, to share his agony. He is gone. And now I am an old man, alone. No, I will go with you. With good faith for gone, you will be my companion. Yes, take heart, Christian. I know many in Vanity Fair who'd be strengthened by your example, who will seek to follow the path you tread. Then, for faithful sake, we must go on. Oh, well met, sir. Can we join you? Indeed you may. If you're going this way, I'd be glad of your company. Fairweather's the name. I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> We're going to the Celestial City. And I too, sir. But look, I'm sure you two walk far faster than me. Please go on ahead. No, sir. We will willingly go at your pace for a while. <laughs> Where do you come from? I come from a good Christian city, sir, called Fair Speech. I've heard of it. They say it is a wealthy place. It is indeed, sir, I assure you. I have many rich kindred there. My Lord Turnabout, my Lord Time Server, Mr. Smoothman, Mr. Facing Both Ways. Indeed, my wife, a virtuous woman, is the daughter of Lord Feigning. Of course, we differ somewhat in religion from those of the stricter sort. We never strive against wind or tide. We are most zealous when religion goes out in his silver slippers. We like to walk with him in the street when the sun shines and the people applaud him. Mm, well, there are times when we have to go against wind and tide. We must own religion in his rags as well as in his silver slippers. We must own him when he's bound in irons as well as when he walks the streets with applause. I think, sir, you must quicken your pace. Oh, look, you walk far faster than me. You must go on ahead. Then Christian and Hopeful out went him and continued until they came to a delicate plain called Ease. There were trees that bore all manner of fruit and meadows of flowers and where it was green all year long. That's such a lovely place. Behold ye how these crystal streams do glide to comfort pilgrims by the highway side The meadows green beside the fragrant snow Yield dainties for them but he can tell What pleasant fruit ye leaves these trees do yield Will soon sell all that he may buy Hopeful, we must not tarry. There's a storm in the air. It's time for us to go.
Sussex then? What are you doing trespassing on my land? We, we didn't know it was private. They all say that. Claim they never saw the sign. Well, this is Doubting Castle, and I am giant despair. And I don't take kindly to trespasses on my land. <sighs> What have you got there, dearest? Two days! Said they were lost on their way to the Celestial City. We can't have that, can we? What shall I do, dearest? Beat them without mercy, sweetie pie. Ah! 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 Sore are you, my beauties. Fancy a nice quick exit. A dance in the air. A knife in the guts. A sip of this. <laughs> What bliss it would be to end it all. Remember what Job said in his torment. I would choose strangling and death rather than this body. You mustn't talk like that, Christian. We try our best. Be strong. Get some rest. They're still alive. Give them another beating. I can't! Me arms all numb! Oh, give me that, you ungrateful curs! Sweetie, what shall we do with them? Oh, I will tear them limb from limb! I will eat their flesh! I will take their bones and throw them in the pit. I will take their skulls and decorate my garden. <laughs> oh, yeah, we will. <laughs> Christian, I'm frightened. Are we going to die in this place? No. Remember what you have borne so far, hopeful. You are very brave. I don't feel so brave now. How stupid of me. I had it all along. I was given it by the parson. What is it? The key of promise. I was told it would be of use here. Let's try it. They went till they came to the delectable mountains where they found gardens and orchards, vineyards and fountains of water. Gosh, it's good to feel clean again. <laughs> These fruits are scrumptious. Oh, oh, look over there. A sheep in that field. And a shepherd. I'm going to speak to him. Hello. Oh, how do good, sir? Where be heading? The Celestial City. Oh, you're going right. 
How far is it? Too far, but for all those that get there. Is the way dangerous then? Safe for those that are too safe, but for them this bad is full of pitfalls. Can we get food and lodging here? This is the Lord's Mountain and he's charged us to look after strangers. Not like those other hills. Yeah, you come with me. That one in front of us is called Error. Those people lying down at the bottom. Dead. Fallen. Dashed to pieces on the rocks. Uh, had some funny idea about the Lord not rising from the dead. Now, look you here. That other mountain, what's odd about it? There's a big hole in the side, like a doorway. With smoke and fire coming out of it. And a funny smell. Brimstone. And can I hear? Are those screams? They are. Oh. The tormented souls that took the wrong path. The byway to hell, we call it. How horrible. Can we see the celestial city from here? You can, Master. Look through these. Oh, what can you see? I think I see a gate and a huge glow. But it's all blurred. That's because your hands are shaking after looking into hell. <laughs> oh, we're getting close, Hopeful. Finally, at last. Can you give us directions? <laughs> I can, but a word of warning. Watch out for the flatterer and don't sleep on the enchanted ground. Mm. Guys, can I join you? Sure. Where are you heading? The Celestial City. Me too. I'm Tim. Tim Ignorance. Good to meet you. But Tim, you came on the Crooked Road over there. Sure. I live in Conceit City. The Crooked Road goes straight from there to here. Easy. So you, you didn't come through the Wicket Gate? Didn't need to. Conceit City's on the other side, you see. But... Wouldn't it be difficult to get through the Celestial City's gate? No problem. I know what the Lord wants. I don't steal. I don't answer back. I give my money to the poor. I think that's going to get him. He must think again. We should leave him. No, I agree. We are in a hurry. We must away. No worries. See you later. They left Tim Ignorance behind and went on. They came to a fork where one way seemed no less straight than the other. Which path to take, they asked themselves. You look like fine fellows to me. But puzzled which way to go, are you not? Both paths look the same look the same, but aren't the same. Let me show you the right one. I don't think we should trust him. He seems a noble fellow. What are you waiting for? Follow me. You will hang here until you rot. I should have listened to you, Hopeful. Don't beat yourself up, Christian. We've got to find a way out of this. How? No, this net feels so strong, we'll never get out. And to think we were so close.
What fine pickle have you two pilgrims got yourselves into? We, we thought we were on the right path, but it was a trap. Who led you here? A noble man in a golden cloak. That would be the Lord Flatterer. Weren't you told about him? Yes, he seemed so helpful. I'd have thought by now you'd have learned not to trust those with an oily tongue. You have strayed from the path and must pay the price. The price? Chastisement. I am a shining one, an angel of light. I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Oh. enchanted ground. Remember what the shepherd said. On no account must we lie down. You must keep going hopeful. Come on, hopeful. Stay awake. Sing, sing, sing. When saints do sleep in Once over the enchanted ground, the pilgrims entered into the country of Beulah, whose air was very sweet and pleasant. Here they were in sight of the celestial city. Here in this land, the shining ones commonly walked because it was upon the borders of heaven. of the sun is blinding us. Nor was this the last of their obstacles. Between them and the gate was a river. It looks very wide. Can you see a bridge? No. There must be a way round. I can't swim. There isn't, Christian. We have to go through it. I'll try. <laughs> it's cold! Help! I'm sinking! Have faith, Christian. The more we believe, the shallower the water gets. Keep your head up. Oh. I can see the gate! Hopeful? It's you who will be saved, not me! No, Christian. You have shown as much trust and hope as I. We're almost there.
welcome to the celestial city and hopeful who so bravely spoke up for me. Your travails are over. These pilgrims, loving our Lord when in the world, for his holy name have left all behind. We he hath sent that they may be called face to face joyfully their Redeemer to find. gazing upon all these things, I turned my head to look back and saw Tim Ignorance come up to the riverside. He had found Vain Hope, the ferryman, who rowed him across. He was fully confident of getting in, but when he got to the gate, he was refused. He was taken to the steps on the side of the hill. The door opened up for him. Then I saw that there was a way back to hell, even from the gates of heaven, as well as from the city of destruction. So I awoke, and behold, it was a dream.